We didn't see any upsets in other congressional races, but that doesn't mean it was a cakewalk for the incumbents. Channel 3's Mark Robbins has been giving us an update throughout the morning, and he has another recap for us. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Nicole. What's the old saying from the Mel Brooks movie? It's good to be the king. It's good to be a Democrat if you're a U.S. Uh, House of Representative uh, from the state of Connecticut. Four of them have already gotten in and been reelected, and but that's a good sign for them. But it doesn't mean they didn't have stiff challenges. The stiffest challenge of all may have come from Rosa DeLauro's opponent in the 3rd District. Milford's Margaret Stryker spent more than a million dollars of her own money to run a heated campaign, hurling accusations at DeLauro, who in turn threw some allegations and punches of her own. In this district, they said no. They said no to a candidate who ran a scurrilous and a racist campaign. We need to make government work for the middle class and not just the richest in this country. And tonight, the people of Connecticut said yes to that future. Jim Himes earned another opportunity in southwestern Connecticut as he won re-election in the 4th District. John Larson's win in District 1 was very personal. He defeated Republican Mary Fay. Fay was a member of the Pomperog High School girls basketball team that Larson coached. And in District 2, Joe Courtney is projected to defeat Republican challenger Justin Anderson, although Courtney won't commit to victory until all the votes have been counted. So far, we're looking very strong on, on the postal vote. So, you know, I think, again, as I think a lot of people predicted, this thing could take a while. And all the winners can thank uh, the record turnout, higher than 77% voter turnout. That old record came coming from 2016 in the presidential election. Reporting live in Hartford with Mark Robbins, Channel 3, Eyewitness News. Coley, back to you.